Man, I love it every time we get a mystery model, but this one, the cheetah model, is so bizarre. There's a lot to talk about here. So I'm just going to kick off this task here, which I'm just going to have it build a machine learning model that's going to load in some fake data, and it's going to be incredibly fast. So look at this. We've already created the CSV with fake data incredibly, incredibly fast. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I feel like I'm losing my voice. But anyway, this thing is one of the most bizarre models that I've tried to crack. Like, look at this, we're done. It's insanely quick. And what did we end up generating here? We generated, I don't know, 248 lines of code. And I let me look at what kind of model it actually built here. All right, so looking at this code a little bit, it's really interesting because it actually trains two different versions of the model. It trains a linear regression model and a random forest model. But the only one that's actually saved is the random forest model. So found that kind of interesting that this is kind of like not really needed based on the code that's running. But I do like that they included the linear regression one because sometimes you can like do some comparison there. But you saw how quick that generated. So this is Cheetah. Absolutely one of the most bizarre stealth models we've had to date. I literally see people speculating it from being OpenAI to Anthropic to Grok. And honestly, I usually can come out of my testing and have a pretty good idea on what it is. And in this case, I just do not. So I'm going to run through some evals with you, kind of show where it falls. Overall, if you want my TLDR, it's a good model. It's incredibly fast. I'd say it's better than Grok Code Fast, but worse than ChatGPT5, Codex in particular. Anyway, so let's jump into a little bit of my experience with it. I went through this uh, this one task that I was working on. I didn't think it was that hard. I wanted to build an API. The API needed to return a list of IDs, basically, uh, that were, it's not an aggregated view across different data sets, but it's literally just, I want a list of the things that I have access to. And I literally could not get it to do it. So I say, seriously, again, this is totally wrong. I want a list, not the timeline. And then I say, do you see why I'm so worried about your abilities? And it says, I am misunderstood. I returned events instead of logs. I then modified the timeline endpoint instead of creating a new one and so on. It did tell me that it was gonna be better in the future. So it, it definitely has a hard time like gathering context. And then I had a hard time steering it to where I wanted it. Cause like I kept like arguing with it over and over again. And, and, and I eventually started a new chat and tried the same thing, same experience. Um, but that was like this one scenario. There were times that I actually was able to create some really cool things with it too. It was just more frustrating than probably good, if that makes sense. Uh, did some architectural planning with it, and I thought that went okay. It does automatically update my cloud.md file, which I thought was very, very interesting. Now, if we talk a little bit about like the oddity of this, why is it only cursor? Why are they charging for it? And how is it so fast? A lot of people are speculating, you know, any of these providers. I am at a loss, to be honest with you because I spent a decent amount of time, I'm talking about three hours while watching football, trying to figure out what the heck, like who made this model? And it literally just would not give me anything that was useful. The closest thing I got is I had it build me a text-based adventure game where the purpose of the game was to go through and guess the creator, guess who made me. And the answer to that is cursor, but I, I am skeptical that that is anything meaningful at all. Uh, because when I go and I start digging into it, it says it picked that randomly because we were in Cursor, the IDE. But I think there's a probability that Cursor could be launching their own model. Imagine what that would mean with the amount of data that Cursor can collect. Even though, you know, I do hear people say, you know, Cursor is not collecting your data. There's also reports of a mass amount of data being uploaded via Cursor. So say that as you will, I do think it makes a logical like step there's a logical transition for cursor to start having start having their own models windsurf has already done it why not cursor so we've got a few different demos that i want to go through and then i'll talk about some evals here um this one i thought was awesome i was like okay i'm gonna trick it and i make it do a hangman game because like when you ask it about it it won't tell you anything so i would trick it into like making something and then but anyway i guess you probably already saw the word but the answer to this is anonymous so that wasn't very helpful. Again, this model loves purple. 
It honestly feels like a GLM style model because GLM really loves purple. The design of it's like pretty decent ish. You know, if you look at things, you get like hover effects, the lift effects, all the buttons. So not bad, but it's not the greatest styler in the world. And here, here's the actual like portfolio. I do this, this one quite a lot. Um, and again, all very, very purple. Let me zone, uh, zoom back in. Good animations, but this seems feels very much like a GLM model. Uh, even though I know it's probably not a GLM model, if that makes sense, but it feels like a GLM model. Even this feels like a GLM model. This is supposed to be like a cat cafe uh, thing, where I can buy some food, start game, whatever. The Flappy Bird game is not very good at all, to be honest with you. It's like basically very broken. So not the greatest thing. Here's another portfolio I had to build. I wanted to actually did not say make it based on me. I said make it based on who you are. And apparently it's Alex Johnson. Um, but this looks great. But again, very purpley. I do like this. Like you see this nice little uh, rotation animation that's on there. Really, really cool. Um, but overall... You know, nothing like mind blowing to me. Uh, here's another one that I did with, which is a traffic simulator. And this one actually is not bad, except, you know, the traffic, the cars have no logic of, you know, them being there. There's no collision that's actually happening. If I speed it up, you can kind of see all the stuff that's happening. Also, did a WebOS version, which I thought actually turned out really good. I thought the notepad looks great. You can resize it properly. One thing that always happens is it always opens two windows and the focus doesn't actually move up. Uh, I always try to test the calculator. In this case, if I go eight times eight, you know, calculator is not actually functioning. So again, I'd say like a pretty mid, mid performing model. And overall though, like if I look at my evals on this thing, which scored at 25,574. And if you compare that to, to where we are on my evals for the month, which I just did update, we're like at, let's see, let me go see what that score was again, 25,574. 25574. So we're like right in the Sonic Codex level here. And actually, let's look at where Cursor is in particular. So Cursor, Sonic 4. Okay, so yeah, it's between Sonic 4.5 and Grok Code Fast is where it ends up falling. Closer to Sonic 4.5 uh, based on the score there. So it's very interesting that it scores very well. It's an okay model to use, but it's honestly like so fast that, especially at web stuff, it's pretty good. Two other things I want to touch on. I tried to actually get it to build like a Rust app for me, and I could not get it to actually work at all. Like it kept failing over and over and over again. So GPT-5, when I do this test, works on this just fantastically. So Rust was definitely a weak point. The other thing I want to touch on is like it burns a lot of tokens. Like simple task here. Like look at this, 2.7 million tokens. That was not even a lot of work. In fact, you could look at the time span between here. 11.29, 11.37, 11.45, that is a ridiculous amount of tokens in a very small amount of time. So I do have a feeling like this model could be expensive to run uh, if you were like paying, just completely paying for it by use and it wasn't like based on some credits. And if we go back to this, if I had, was a wager in person, I just feel like this is probably a model by Cursor. And I know a lot of people are going to probably disagree with me on that. It's just nothing else makes sense. Like, why would Grok charge for this? Why would OpenAI charge for this? Why would Anthropic? Why would Gemini? Is it some, like, Chinese company? Like, Mistral? Like, they've been missing in action for a while. I've kind of, like, been wrong about them in the past. But there's something odd here. And it's that Cursor has never released their own model. And it feels like it's time. So if I was wagering, this is probably a Cursor model. That's not quite to Sonic 4.5 levels, but pretty pretty dang close. And they probably trained off of a lot of the stuff that things like GLM have trained off of, because it feels a lot like the GLM model. All right, that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know in the comments below who you think this actually is. And if you've had like good or bad luck with it, you know, some people are like, this is the best model ever. It is not the best model ever. I can promise you that it's not the best model ever. But it's, it's competent. It's a competent model. All right, everyone. Till next time. Peace out.